The environment we live in is constantly changing. Forces of nature reshape the land around us, flooding our rivers and battering our coastlines. But have we learnt to live with these changes? Dr Lindsay McEwen from the UK's University of Gloucestershire is leading a unique project to involve local communities in researching their histories in order to improve understanding of longer term flood risk along the lower reaches of the River Severn. And Brian James from Bournemouth University is part of a team concerned with the protection of the coastline, involved in the debate between the use of heavy sea defences and simply letting nature take its course. Dr McEwen believes that a community-based approach to understanding the history of local flood risk is key in developing sustainable solutions to the problems caused by flooding. My research interests incorporate um, looking at historical flood patterns, looking at how historical flood patterns sit within present-day flood series. And I conceived the project as being a sort of something that was novel, where you actually engage the public in that process as part of um, increasing the public's awareness of flood risk. The River Severn in the west of England has a long history of flooding, with some records going back as far as the 13th century, so it's ideal as a case study. As these newspaper photos from 1947 and amateur film footage from the 1960s show, it has experienced quite major floods at intervals over the years, and it is official records of these floods, as well as personal recollections, scientific documentation and other archival sources, that Dr McEwen believes will provide essential information to help increase local knowledge of the changing patterns of flood risk. This also helps communities to prepare for the impact of future flooding. While the debate about global warming goes on, there is little doubt that the world's climate is changing. This change brings increasing variability of weather conditions and the probability of more frequent flooding. Levees and barriers are expensive to build and create other problems when they fail. So projects to find more sustainable means of dealing with flooding are increasingly important. I think that in a, in a climate change context, where you can anticipate greater frequency of flooding, more moderate floods as well as extremes, then looking at other options is, is very important because it's not financially sustainable for communities to protect against the highest floods that are going to occur in, under those scenarios. So um, I, I would say that looking at alternatives, very important, and also increasing awareness not just of community members but people, local authorities, planners, and the whole suite of, of people that might be embraced within the term community rather than just the people who are residents who are vulnerable on floodplains. Scientists also suggest that we might need to find more sustainable means of managing our coastlines. At Christchurch Bay on the Dorset coast, there is a perfect example of the contrast between the use of heavy engineering solutions and simply allowing nature to take its course. At High Cliff, to the west, valuable housing on the cliff top means that extensive engineering solutions have been employed to protect the coastline. At Barton-on-Sea, to the east, the coastline has been left unprotected, leading to natural erosion. The protected area might, on first appearance, be more aesthetically pleasing. But how important is it to protect stretches of coast to this extent? For those people that are affected directly by it, it's a very big problem. But we shouldn't forget that it's a natural process that has gone on um, for a very long time and will continue to go on as part of a very big natural process. The, the key thing is learning how to cope with it and how to manage it in a sensible way that, that is sustainable in terms of cost and is sensible in terms of what we are able to protect and what is clearly not cost effective to, to protect. Climate change is likely to affect sea levels and in turn may alter erosion patterns along our coast. Existing coastal engineering defences may help to exacerbate the problem. By studying areas like Christchurch Bay, researchers can learn a lot about the patterns of erosion and work with the natural process to ensure that engineering intervention is only used where it is most needed and that natural erosion, which creates its own less intrusive defence systems, is left to happen wherever possible. In the past certainly the approach has been uh, very much one of hard coastal engineering and, and that has played an important role. But more and more now the understanding of the natural processes is leading us towards the clear view, a clearer view that it has to be an integrated process. One thing is clear, as climate change makes environmental forces ever more unpredictable and the costs of flood and coastal defences rise, we need solutions for the future that work with nature rather than against it. <laughs>